Welcome to the K20 Center's Zoom Into Your Career video series. These online career expos give students a way to explore many interesting careers and learn about their career options from volunteer professionals. Billy Malin graduated from OU with a journalism degree and worked in the advertising world for about 11 years. After another five years in retail management, he became an RN and now works as a pediatric RN at OU Children's Hospital. Thank you for having me. This is an interesting experience. I, you know, I'm a little older, so we didn't have this way long ago. Um, as uh, Alex said, um, yeah, I did have um, a different degree, a different path many years ago. Um, so I was fortunate uh, in the last five or six years to uh, kind of go back to something that I was a lot more passionate about, which was medicine. Um, I had originally long ago wanted to be a doctor, didn't work out, wasn't for me, went into a whole different career path, and then turned into um, having that opportunity a few years back to make a change and was given the opportunity to go back um, and go into nursing. A lot of people might think that nursing is not necessarily um, a guy's thing, but uh, we'll kind of talk a little bit about that. Um, what I'm going to do real quick is I need to share my screen because I have my PowerPoint. So this is about five to 10 minutes. It's not going to be that long. Um, I think a lot of it is more question and answer. Um, hopefully that's the case, but we'll go from here. Um, so nursing in the contemporary world. Um, a lot of people think that nursing is for women only, um, that nurses are just order takers. Um, the doctors tell us everything to do, um, that we're servants. Uh, some days it kind of feels like that, but it's not true. Um, and that it's just sad and overall not a good thing to be in. Um, but what it really is, is it's all about compassion and advocacy for your patients. It's about safety for your patients. Um, we're pretty stinking intelligent. Uh, we go through a lot of schooling to do this. Um, it's always been something that's very exciting. There's never a dull moment. Um, you walk in at seven o'clock and the next thing you know is you're running for the next 12 to 13 hours. Um, and you're always learning something new. One thing that I'm doing right now is um, I'm actually in school again. Um, you never stop going to school, guys. Um, that makes you a better person. And as a nurse, it makes you a better nurse. So I am currently pursuing additional advanced degrees. Uh, the pictures you see here, um, one is my friend Ned. Um, I work at a pediatric hospital. It's the largest pediatric facility in the state of Oklahoma. Um, we are an academic teaching facility. Um, and so we are comprehensive. We have anything and everything that needs to be done for patients, generally speaking, from birth um, up to mid-20s, depending on the uh, certain situation. Um, but the cool thing is um, therapy dogs. They come every day. Um, but that's Ned. That's one of the hospital's dogs that we have. Um, in that other picture that's there, that is a portion of my graduating class uh, from nursing school a few years back. Um, there are about six guys in that picture. I was in a class of 60 and there were about 20 of us. So on average, um, we're anywhere, men are anywhere between 15 to 20 percent of the population of nurses now. So yes, it is definitely something that is female oriented, but um, it is come becoming a much more inclusive um, profession, which is great. Um, yes, schooling. Um, I pretty much stopped everything that was happening for about two and a half years and did nothing but school. Um, I was fortunate that I could do that. Um, I worked at the same time, but uh, focused on school. Um, and then the other picture is just a stock photo. Um, I can't share any specific pictures of um, patients or anything that happens at work. Um, there are laws that require us to uh, not divulge that information, but Yes, we will always have that potential opportunity to do life-saving things at work, and we do it actually quite often. Um, we had a situation this week that did happen that way. Um, the best thing about it is um, nurses are, and this is an older graphic, uh, we, it's been about 20 years now, are the number one most trusted profession um, in the United States. Um, it's not doctors. Unfortunately, it might not be teachers. I know a lot of teachers are on here right now and they are very important. I come from a teaching family, um, but nurses are the number one most trusted profession. You got to think about it. When you go to the doctor's office or you're in the hospital or anything like that, who do you interact more with? The nurses. So we are the kind of the stop gap in between um, what's happening from the back, uh, from the background and everything that you see going on right then. 
Um, some things you need to know, kind of the basics. Um, it's not all just about science. It's not all just about wiping butts um, or giving shots, shots or medications. You have to know math. Um, it's very important that you're able to do at least basic math. Um, you don't have to get into all this calculus and um, trigonometry or anything like that. And fortunately, we have technology today that kind of helps us with the math that we have to do. But you do have to have a basic understanding. English. We have to communicate. It doesn't mean you can't be bilingual. I work with a ton of bilingual people, and it's an amazing thing because um, it helps us in our daily, uh, daily lives here. And in Oklahoma, um, you know, we need to be bilingual because we do have an influx of people that speak multiple languages. But you have to understand how to communicate with people in that and have conversations with not only patients, but also physicians and being able to translate what physician speak means into common people's dialect. Um, big fancy medical terms people don't understand, don't know what it is, and we're the go-between. Um, you also need to be tech savvy. So yes, this is a real picture. This is a real, this is on the internet, this isn't a patient. Um, but yes, these are a variety of different IV pumps, dialysis machines, machines that control blood flowing in and out of the body through the machine and then back into the human being. We have to know how to do this. Doctors don't know how to work this stuff. I know how to work this stuff. Um, and in social sciences, um, you guys, we need to know how to communicate with people from all different walks of life. Um, at OU, um, since we are the comprehensive facility for pediatrics here, um, I see people from all different ethnic backgrounds, all different uh, religious backgrounds, and et cetera like that. Um, but I need to understand how to work with them because their cultures and their religious beliefs may be different than mine, and that is 100% fine, but I need to be respectful to them. And so that comes into it. Already kind of talked about communication. Yes, it's very important. Um, I'm talking for 14 hours a day at, in some capacity, whether it's between my physicians that are working side by side with me, other um, secondary staff that's there with us, the families, the kitchen to make sure that we get the food right. Um, I have to be able to do all that. And then I also have to type and document everything. Patience is a virtue. Um, it just comes with time. Um, every day I have to sit and be very patient with getting stuff for my patients um, and getting the doctors to do what I need them to do, et cetera, like that. Um, and also, since I work with kids, kids don't necessarily want to do exactly what I want them to do at the time that I want them to do. So I have to figure that out. Um, so that's one other thing. I also have to be very determined. Um, and nurses have to, and just in general, because as I mentioned before, safety is one of the biggest things that we do. Um, doctors may order something incorrectly, and it's my job to make sure that a medication that might harm a patient doesn't get there, and I need to be very determined and very um, aware with it uh, that that doesn't happen. Um, and I will have to have very strong conversations with the physicians that don't like me telling them what to do. But my job is to make sure the patient's safe. And if that means I have to be determined in getting what I need done from the physician side and kind of having some very strong, hard conversations with them, I'm gonna get it done. Flexible, um, in a 12 hour shift, I might start doing something in the beginning of it and that's not what I'm doing by the end. Um, you know, everything can turn on a dime, meaning that, you know, a code could happen in, in, at any time and I have to be able to do what I need to do in that moment. So you never know what's gonna happen. I have anywhere between two to four patients on a shift, it just depends. Um, and so I have to be able to manage multiple things going on with all of those patients at different times. So there are many different types of nurses um, and those are just kind of these acronyms, these little initials stand for the different types of schooling that you might see. Um, you can be an LPN, an ADN, a BSN, an NP as a nurse practitioner. You guys may have come across those in your own personal life. Um, an MSN is a master's of science, um, uh, a master of science in nursing, and that's actually what I'm working towards right now. And yes, there is even a doctor of nursing. Um, these are people that are PhDs that are kind of more academic in a lot of aspects. Um, they're not necessarily like an MD that you guys would think it might be there. So you make your career what you want. There, these are just a few of the various types of uh, avenues you can pursue. You can work with adults, you can work with pediatrics, you can work in psychiatric. 
Um, yes, it's an interesting world. I've done some psych uh, nursing in school and it was fun. Labor and delivery, people love delivering kids, not for me. Um, travel nursing, I have some great friends that have traveled the country and the world as a nurse because there is such a demand for nurses um, that we don't have enough people. Um, and so you can make some pretty decent income if you so desire to do that, but you can see a lot of different places in the country. Um, research OU um, is the state, is a major state university here, obviously, and we do a lot of research. And I have friends that have gone into the research uh, aspect of it on how to make different medications and technologies, and the, um, they work with them there. Uh, school nurses, if you guys have them in your own um, school districts, I didn't have it when I was in school many, many years ago. Uh, procedural nursing, those are your surgical nurses, your cardiac uh, cath nurses, um, those are just the things that pop up, MRIs, different testings you might get done. Um, that's what that is, and obviously the ERs and the intensive care units. So you've got a variety of things that you can do and different ways that you can go, but this is some of the perks. I work three days a week. It's pretty jackum cool. Um, now, granted, my shifts are a minimum of 12 hours. Um, a lot of times I'm there for 13 or 14 hours, just depending on what the day. And yes, I don't necessarily get a break. Um, or a chance to use the bathroom. And that actually does happen, not very often. My um, upper management and my team members are all very good about making sure that we eat, that we take a break, because self-care is important to all of us, but this is a demanding job. And when you're there, you kind of, your patients come first and foremost. At least that's in my mind. Um, do you like nights? Nursing's 24 seven. I worked nights for about two years. Um, it is a different world um, when you sleep during the day and when you're asleep and the doorbell's going off or your neighbors are loud or the lawnmowers are going off and you wanna go to bed. Yep, you have to work through it because you know I still gotta take care of kids at 3 a.m. Um, you do get to work with people and see positive results. A lot of people don't think about, or when they think about what avenue of nursing they might want to go into, a lot of people don't like the fact of working with kids. I would work with, I would rather work with kids because 99% of the time they go home and 99% of the time, this isn't something that they did to themselves. As we get older, we can make choices and make the determinations of how we live our lives. Kids generally have that opportunity that they're, they're not. Doesn't mean that it doesn't happen, but um, you know you get to see kids go home and do better, uh, and I think that's a positive thing for me at least. Um, you use your brain and your muscles. Um, I think every day I have to critically think every day um, what's going to be the best thing for my patients um, and what's the right thing for my patients. Also, it's a physical job. Um, one of the reasons I just chose to work with kids was I didn't want to have to work with 700-pound people. Um, but I still have to work with 18 year olds that are, um, bigger than me. I'm six foot one. Um, I'm not a small person, but you know, I got to move them around and do what I need to with them. So I still have to use my physical strength. It's high in demand. Um, and there's tons of opportunities. Um, I, like I said about travel nursing, you know, there's a shortage in this country and you can go anywhere and everywhere. Um, you don't have to just stay in your, you know, I know I've got, there's kids from Southwestern Oklahoma and Eastern Oklahoma, um, listening right now. And, you know, you don't have to just stay there. You can go in a lot of places. Um, and so there's opportunities and the earning potential is up to the individual, the actual person. All right. Um, but it shouldn't be your basis for why you do this because you will get burned out. Um, you either like it or you don't. So, um, and you know, I had, like I said, I had that opportunity a long time ago, um, to, or a few years ago, I should say, to do this. Um, I worked for corporate America for about 15 years, um, and I got burned out on that. It wasn't what I wanted to do because I didn't like making money for other people. I wanted to do it, make a difference with actual people, um, not from a financial perspective. And this allowed me to do it. So I work those three days, maybe four, just depends, but it's not work for me. It's actual fun. Um, I leave with a smile most days um, because I've done something, whether it be something simple, um, but or a big, I was able to make sure that, I, you know, something didn't go south with a patient. Um, those things, it's, it's a good feeling to leave work and feel like you've done something. And that's why I actually love what I do. Um, 
this is kind of where I work. So this is the Children's Hospital from the outside. Um, this is downtown Oklahoma City. Um, and something that's kind of cool that happened on Sunday. So this is me at work on Sunday. We had the, uh, they had a special event and the Star Wars characters were there. The perk of working in a pediatric hospital, we have a lot of fun things that happen. It's not always just sad and boring and lonely. So that's all I got. Who's got questions? All right, guys. Let's see. Thank you, Billy, for sharing all your information. Um, yep. I love the pictures that you've got. Um, if you guys have questions that you'd like to ask Billy about his career, um, you can type those into the chat box right now, or you can type in that you have a question you'd like to ask him yourself, and we will go to your room, um, and you can unmute yourself to ask. Um, I will start with a couple of questions just while we let our classrooms, you know, kind of get those things thinking, um, which would you prefer, working days or working nights? They have a different um, benefit to both. Um, so from a night shift perspective, there's less people around. So that means you are kind of that problem solver. So I'm having to be the one that sees the issue that's at hand um, and make decisions that will determine the course of action that happens for a patient. So I feel like I'm a little bit more of a um, driver in the patient perspective, um, get paid a little bit more. Uh, I'm also an insomniac, so I don't sleep that much. So nights weren't too terrible for me. Um, it does have a drawback when you're trying to um, visit with family and friends and have a life in some aspects, but um, it, it kind of, you have to make your own balance there. Days um, are just extremely busy. Um, that's when most of the physicians are there. All of the secondary support staff are there. Um, so it's very, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? There's just always something going on. It's very busy. There's very, there's lights. Um, just people are asking you questions 24 seven, uh, parents, family, and um, the patients are awake. So they're actually asking you questions and you have to be able to engage with them. Um, there's just a lot of stimulus, um, going on during the days. And so that makes it a little bit more challenging, but the life outside of it is a lot easier. Thanks. Um, I think my co-host Danny has a question, so he's going to sure. pop on and ask you. Yeah, hey, so it sounds like you're really busy every day, and I would just like for you to share with the students around the state that are watching now, so um, rather than go into everything that you do on your job, can you tell us, because I know you don't even have time to stop to pee, so can you maybe walk us through like the first hour or two, like so you walk in the door, and then what happens? So we walk in, um, and we have a quick five to ten minute meeting briefing on what's going on. Um, we get our assignments for the day. Um, as far as um, who, which patients we're gonna take care of. Um, they give us an overview of what to kind of expect um, from leadership that day. Um, then we go out, we get report from the nurses that are coming off shift as far as what's been going on in the past 12 hours. Um, and then from there, we, like I said, anywhere from two to four patients, just depending on the day of, of the week. Um, and we will, I will, go and start assessing my patients, making sure that everything is taken care of from them. Um, that usually takes about an hour or so, just, and that's going to be basic vital signs, um, making sure that they are safe, that they're sleeping, they're breathing, um, or they're awake, you know, that all of their drains, their IVs are working, anything like that. If I have to start new lines on patients, that generally is what happens at the beginning of the day. Um, and then we roll into charting which is a constant thing that is always happening because we have to make sure that everything that we do is documented. Um, and then from there, you're gonna start passing meds just depending on the day um, when they're due. Um, and so that'll happen um, and that happens throughout the shift. Then just depending again on the day, I might start having procedures that I have to be a part of, um, inserting tubes into kids' noses, inserting tubes into other parts of the body. Um, I am trained to do all of that. Um, and then, you know, you might have labs that you're going to have to do. So you might be having to poke for labs. I'm sure some of the um, people that are listening have had to have blood drawn. I do all of that. Um, that's kind of, that's the basic of about a 12 hours. That's constantly happening. Okay, great. Thanks. Sounds like you're uh, really busy all Generally the time. Generally speaking. Yeah. Is there anything that makes you nervous? Like you're going to a procedure or you're, is there anything that's like nerve wracking? Um, 
walking in the door at the first part of the day because you don't know what you're walking into. Um, you know, it, every it just a different moment happens. Um, you, we had a code on my unit this week, and that's not something that generally happens. And what that means is that that person was either their heart had stopped or they were not breathing. Um, and so we're trained in how to respond to that. And, you know, that's something that is nerve wracking because, you know, somebody's life is on the, uh, you know, is at stake. Um, so that would probably be the more nerve wracking thing and, and kind of stressful thing. Um, you also, from time to time, just, you have to have tough conversations, um, with patients and with family about what's about to happen. Um, and if they've been given some poor news that they didn't want to hear, I might be that first face that they see right after the doctors tell them something negative. That's not fun. Um, but that's just the nature of the job. We got to deal with it from time to time. Thanks for answering. Um, do our schools have any questions that are coming in? You can give us a wave or you can type into the chat box that you guys would like to ask a question. Um, I've got a couple more. So if you were not working in pediatrics, what would your next choice be? Um, I've, uh, I don't <laughs> think that I would ever, I guess, at this moment, I don't see myself leaving um, working with kids. I think it's just, it's fun for me and it's, it's kind of my niche. Mm -hmm. um, I work in a specific and in, in a more generalized area. It's, just, um, it's not an ICU, but it's not a general like office. Um, I see a lot of different things, but what I think I would like to do um, is sit down the road, road, work with our oncology patients, which are the cancer patients. Um, I've had some family friends and stuff like that that have had um, some challenges with that, uh, with those diseases. And it's just, I find it fascinating and it's fun. It's still fun. So can you tell our students, um, you work like on a specific floor and each floor has a different need within their hospital? Mm -hmm. So within where we have what, 12, 11 stories within the building. Um, and depending on, um, we'll have labor and delivery is the big, is the bottom. Um, you start working into the neonatal intensive care unit, which is all of your babies, basically under the age of six months, usually. Um, we have a pediatric, we have a large pediatric intensive care unit. Um, part of it just got, um, they actually just opened it. Uh, we doubled the size. We have cardiovascular, which is your heart system. Um, we've got a specialty um, intensive care unit for them. We have, <clears throat> excuse me, um, we have eating disorders um, uh, facility within the building. We have all of our surgical procedures and the surgical rooms um, are there. Um, my where I work is generally kids with respiratory issues, um, gastrointestinal, so your guts, um, and um, the neuro, so stuff to deal with the brain. Um, so I kind of have a variety of things that I can see, and then we can see anything and everything else in between. Awesome. Um, whenever you do, you get assigned to a certain floor department, or do you get to make a preference or choice? How does that work? I work on my own. Um, when I accepted my position, I am assigned to the unit that I work on. So there are times when um, staffing calls for us to get what we call floated. Um, so if my unit is overstaffed and another unit is understaffed, I can get floated from time to time, just depending on where the need is mm -hmm. um, and what my specific skill set is. Um, I wouldn't float at this moment into our cardiovascular intensive care unit because I don't have um, the training that they have on certain things that they do up there. So That makes sense. Okay, schools, last chance. Anybody have any questions? You can either wave us down or you can type something in the chat box before we let Billy get back to the rest of his day. Um, but I don't want to cut anybody short if they have a question to ask. Did we have one over there in you guys can unmute yourselves and ask if you do. You. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know where are you from? I grew up um, northwest Oklahoma, um, in between Kingfisher and Enid. Um, I have lived um, in the states of Florida, Tennessee, Texas, Michigan, um, and then I came back to Oklahoma eh, about ten years ago. But I live in Oklahoma City now. Great question. Anybody else? <laughs> Now's your time. Okay, I will end it, um, end it with just one final question and then we'll let you go. Um, what is the most, you talked about some of the different procedures and things you do. Um, 
And I know when we've gone to the hospital for one of my kids or for myself or anything, then we see a lot of our nurses with a stethoscope. And I know a lot of times people, um, you know, have a misconception about what that's used and they think maybe just doctors have it. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, so it is a very important, the first person that you see usually when you get into any type of hospital setting um, or clinic setting um, is your nurse. Um, it is our responsibility to assess the patient um, generally first. Um, and um, I have to have a stethoscope. I have to be able to determine if you're breathing, how you're breathing, how it sounds, how it looks. Um, I have to know that your heart's beating and how it sounds. Um, and so we have to use our stethoscopes just as much if not more than doctors, usually they'll come up to us and ask us, hey, do you have your stethoscope? I have three of my own at this point, um, just because they tend to walk away. Um, but um, I know that there was a joke a few years back about um, somebody saying that it's a doctor's stethoscope. Nurses actually are the ones that are assessing the patients probably more often than the doctors are. Um, and so in the end, in my mind, um, your nurses are the ones that are the stopgap in between you going home and you going south and having to have something negative happen to you because we're the ones that are by the bedside more than the physicians. And so our stethoscopes are there. We have to have them. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we did have two questions roll in that we'll answer cool. and then we will wrap it up. Um, so the first question is when really did you decide that you wanted to be a nurse and then what specific things did you study maybe even in preparation for going into nursing school? Um, I had a good friend of mine from my undergrad days at OU who has been a nurse for about 20 years um, and um, we lived in Houston together many years ago and I just always admired the fact um, of um, her drive and determination. Um, my mother uh, passed away about 12 to 13 years ago and we were in the ICU um, here in Oklahoma City and just the nurses were amazing. Um, they were the ones that were by the bedside dealing with everything that happened to my mom and dealing with my family um, and how we were coping with the situation. One of those nurses ended up being an instructor of mine. Um, but um, just having those interactions really changed my thought and view on how strong and how important nurses were. And it was something that I, in a lot of conversations, um, was able to say, this is something that I can, I can really get behind. Um, and so those were kind of some of the really big things um, that kind of turned me into wanting to do this. Um, as far as schooling, um, I had to, so if you go to any, whether you go to, I'm trying to think of, I know down south there's um, some like two-year colleges and stuff like that, and then you got your big universities. You're going to have to have basic education from a university perspective. Um, or a college perspective, so your basic English is uh, in math um, and such, but I had to take extra science classes, chemistry, uh, microbiology, I took some biology, just regular biology classes, um, and then I took um, all your basic English classes. I just had to do basic math. Um, I went into like college algebra, um, and I did not do well at OU with doing college algebra, so I took it at community college. Um, and then what else did I take? Um, chemistry, basic science. Um, I think those were kind of the specifics that they were looking for as far as just going into nursing school. Um, because then in nursing school, you're taking um, all sorts of biology classes that will be focused on certain diseases and how we interact with them and what to look for, what's, um, how to manage them. Um, then you'll take pharmacology classes so that you know how to um, determine what medications are right for this right, um, right patient. Um, and then you'll take procedural classes where you learn how to start IVs and put in tubes that go through your nose, down into your stomach, um, and put in the other tubes that go in other places. Um, and so there's a variety of things, but um, it's not, you need to understand your science background and understand how the human body works. Um, a lot of it is on the job. You learn a lot while you're working. So you would recommend um, just like whatever science and kind of math classes in that high school time frame mm -hmm. as they're leading into um, mm -hmm. looking into colleges? 
Yep, I did biology in high school. I did a physiology class um, that they offered in my school. Um, what else did I take? And I did um, like algebra, algebra one, algebra two. Um, that all led into college. Um, I think that was it as far yeah. as like my basics out of high school.